Hello, brothers and sisters. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for all of the subscriptions to my channel and all of the beautiful comments that have been made about the first video I did. And also to wish each and every one of you a happy new year. In 2018, this is what I feel the Lord is saying to me and, and to deliver this message to the church for 2018. And that is, it is a time for God's people to seize the victories that Christ won. It is time for us to move from a defensive to an offensive position. It is totally impossible to win a war fighting a defensive battle. To defeat Satan, we need to an offensive strategy. The reason we haven't progressed in defeating the enemy is that when the enemy comes, we put up our hands and try to defend ourselves. But offensive warfare is aggressive, and being aggressive calls for each of us to develop an attitude of action, an attitude of boldness, and moving forward. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And what that's trying to say is, when the kingdom of heaven expands here on earth, it expands as a result of the the members of the church, the body of Christ, being offensive and being bold and refusing to compromise on the word and not being ashamed of our Lord and Savior or something or to tell other people to share other with other people the fact that we've accepted him as Lord and Savior and soul win and tell other people how they could get saved the same as the bold people that stood out at the time that we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Those bold people that were out calling and witnessing all those years ago when I decided to accept him as Lord and Savior. If, if, if they had been shrinking violence and been ashamed or something of the fact to, to talk about Jesus, I might not, they may have never have come to my home and I may have never heard that message and never had the opportunity to accept him as Lord and Savior myself. So the number one goal and responsibility and thing that the Lord wants each and every person that's in him to be doing is soul winning telling other people the gospel and telling them how they can be saved and they can escape the wrath to come that is close, that is at our door. And also I feel that the Holy Spirit is telling me that yes, the rapture is at the door. It's close. It's close. It's at the door. No question of that at all. But the Holy Spirit is telling me that doesn't mean that the Lord wants us to fold our hands and sit back and just wait until the rapture occurs and then uh, say, oh, hey, okay, we're out of here. We escaped the wrath. Uh, that's good news for us or whatever. But every single day until that rapture occurs, if that rapture occurs five days from now, we have five more days to witness to people, to tell other people how they can be saved and how they could maybe escape the wrath. Our, our job is to soul win, to be winning souls or something and not just sitting on our, resting on our laurels, waiting for the Lord to return. Jesus put it very clearly when he said that the violent shall take the kingdom of heaven by force. According to Strong's Concordance, the word violent means to seize and take hold of forcibly. Traditionally, we have been preoccupied with teaching people how to protect themselves against the enemy. This is necessary, but now it is time for us 
not to just teach our people to protect ourselves against Satan, but raise up an army to invade Satan's territory. Our head and general, the Lord Jesus Christ, has already conquered the enemy and gained the victory. It is, it is now up to us to boldly seize what he has conquered. Notice Caleb's attitude when he returned from his spying expedition to the promised land. He did not allow Satan to come time to come against him. Instead, he attacked Satan offensively by saying, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are able, well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. So let's go up there right now and take it. No delay, no holding back, no bashfulness, no being ashamed, or no apologizing, you know, for the fact that we believe in the Lord. That was in Numbers 13 uh, and uh, verse 30. His attitude was one of total unwavering victory. For he knew his God and believed his promises. He was willing to act with boldness. He knew that victories can only be won through offensive warfare action. Only through offensive warfare led by the Holy Spirit can we stop holding the fort, which is all we're doing right now, is holding the fort, and move on to become more than conquerors, which is in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. We're more than conquerors in him. That's what his word says. We're conquerors. Let's start acting like it. And now, I just have a few other things to say and then I'll close. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 26, the Lord says, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory in his fathers and with his fathers and in the holy angels. He'll be ashamed. If we're ashamed of him now, if we're ashamed to share the gospel with the unsaved world, he says that when he comes back, if the rapture is soon, everybody's waiting for him to come back. I don't want him. I don't know about anybody else. But I don't want him to be ashamed of me when he comes. When he comes to take me out of here, I don't want him to be ashamed of me. When I get up there onto the other side, I don't want to feel like he's ashamed of me. And the other point I'd like to make in, in closing... comes from the book of Proverbs in chapter 11 and verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. That's in the Old Testament. He that wins souls is wise. It's about soul winning, brothers and sisters. It's about soul winning. We all want out of here. We're, we're all awaiting for the rapture of the church. But what about the lost and dying world? Do we fit, think that the Lord doesn't care about that? He's not concerned about that or something? Or is it maybe, maybe the real truth or something is that that's what he's most concerned about right now? He knows that we're in him. He knows what my future is. He knows if he's going to come here and get me. Uh, a month from now. That's already settled. That's all. I don't think he's too concerned about that, but I think he's concerned about maybe the people, more concerned about maybe the people that are around me, you know, that I see maybe in my day-to-day -day walk of life or something. Maybe he's concerned about those people that haven't accepted him as Lord and Savior that's not going to make it, that's not going to be taken out of here, 
because nobody wanted to take the time to witness to him and tell him what they had to do to be saved. So that's all I, I that's all I want to say. I think the year of 2018, the Lord is telling me, is the final harvest of the of of His church. There's going to be a final harvest of souls, and there's going to be a brief revival, time of revival for the church just before the rapture, before he gets us out of here, there will be revival. And how do I feel right in the, the deepest part of my soul that the revival is going to take place? What, what circumstances are going to lead up to this last final push by the Holy Spirit for to win souls for the kingdom? It's going to be because there's going to be some probably great natural disasters or some kind of things or something here in the United States and, and other parts of the world that's going to shake people up. It's going to shake people up. It might, might shake them up and get them to start thinking about where they stand, where they stand with him. Until next time, Take care of yourselves. Think about, you know, what we could be doing while we're waiting for the rapture. What would the Lord have me to be doing right now? If he's going to come next month, I've got 30 days left or something. What do I think the Lord would have me to be doing right now? Just simply waiting for him to come back? Or should I be sharing the gospel? So I'd like to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you again for your subscribing to the channel. Um, until we meet again the next time, uh, just remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank you.